Welcome back. I'm getting excited. I don't know if you can tell, but we got our uh, cab on our new all-wheel drive <coughs> turbo chassis, and uh, we're gonna show you how we got here, but this is gonna be a little different of a video. It's gonna be a three-part video. One, of the transfer case and how we got it to fit the 4L80. Two is gonna be the interior on this, or actually, that's gonna be the last one. Second one is how we got the cab on this without a lift. So stick around, this is gonna be fun. And what I got right here in this little box is gonna make a big solution to one of our major problems in this truck. When you build these all-wheel drive trucks and you really put power to them, the 4L60s will not stand up. So this right here, David Stacy, thank you very much. Uh, he makes these, uh, they're the yoke, um, I guess you would call the 32 uh, spline conversion for the 4L80s. And uh, I'm gonna test fit it and check it out. This is our new coupler to throw into our 149 transfer case. This is a 32 spline where the one that in it, the one that is in it is a 27 spline. It's made to work for the 4L60. We've converted to 4L80. So now we gotta swap this in. At the same time, we're gonna uh, throw in uh, this guy for the pump. Um, I'll show you a little more about that later. But we just got a seal kit. It's gonna be nice and easy, hopefully. But our first problem is our bolts are really rusted up. Uh, they put this plastic covering on it and it has basically rust them really far up. So we'll see how that goes and we'll go from there. All right, first off the get go, Pretty sure these are supposed to be 15 millimeter sockets and they are super sloppy. So they put a plastic housing on this from the factory and it has basically rusted these things away. They're about, yeah. So I'm gonna go around put with a 14 and try to get all these off that I can. And then we're gonna start beating sockets on and it it's gonna get ugly. So let's get to it. So if you don't get this um, C-clip off in here, you can't pull this transmission apart. That's why they put that rubber grommet there that looks like a slot for pliers. So, um, yeah, it looks easy as shit to me. Okay, not bad. Just, just rubber junk, actually. They put too much on on the inside, so it all collected down there in the pump. You can see how much was on the pump. It's just rubber, man. You just about ruined it. But all the rubber that's on here, I'm surprised it didn't ruin this. To tell you the truth. I hope the pump's okay. Very nice shape. Everything looks perfect. This magnet is important. If you see this, don't really see much on it. It's in pretty nice shape. So that's super good. Apparently it had a lot of anices on it. I don't know if anices is magnetic, but it had a ton of it on there. Yeah, so that much silicone inside there is actually pretty dangerous. I am surprised that pump was okay, and I'm gonna really do my uh, best to not get anywhere close to that much. This is how thin it comes out at the end. When you tighten it down, it just all goes into the inside. Well, it's a good thing I didn't put a 4L60 back in it and uh, just ran this like it was. It probably wouldn't have lasted a whole lot longer. It took three seconds to get the C-clip 
three hours to figure out the uh, speed sensor had to come out too. That's the difference. Name of the game here, guys. Keep everything clean, wear gloves, properly lubricate it when it goes back together, and it's going to work a lot better for you. Take the time to get a C-clip, um, puller, uh, the right punches, a brass hammer, and you should be able to do this no problem at home. All right, we're gonna pop some seals in here. So this is uh, the adapter. Again, this is the difference you're going to. For our ladies, 27. This is a 32. And there is a snap ring that you have to put in there, and it is a little tricky. Don't forget about your magnet. I've already cleaned it off pretty dang good. Yesterday I pressure washed this out because it was all full of silicone. Whoever put this together last time used an excessive amount of uh, RTV silicone, whatever your flavor is, um, and it actually was completely coated this thing. I'm surprised the pump was good, but somebody had recently rebuilt this because it was it's in immaculate shape. The bearings are great. Everything else is great. So I cleaned it up and uh, pressure washed it out. It was about 90% plug, so got lucky. So this is a little rusty. I'm gonna clean this up with some emery so or emery cloth, but I'm gonna make sure not to get the bearing uh, all nasty. Uh, Work. All right, check it out. We just finished it up. Unfortunately, the camera died right about the time that I had put the sealant on and uh, I couldn't stop. So I did use some Dorman uh, new bolts because the other ones were so rusty. They're literally different sizes. So um, I'm gonna get the camera moved and we're gonna throw this in the truck for the first time. The swap for the yoke is done. This is a 32 spline input. They never made a uh, NV149 with a 32 spline in it. That's why uh, these are a little hard to make work, but it's a $500 item, but then you gotta rebuild the transfer case. Once you rebuild the transfer case, make sure everything's good in it. You gotta do your upgrades while you're in there, like we did with uh, our pump backing plate. But anyways, enough of the chit chat. We're just gonna throw this thing in and get it done. All right, as you can see, we got the transfer case in, we got the adapter on, everything bolted up nice. Uh, but as you can see, we're a little short on the uh, drive shaft. So this front one's gonna get remade, uh, lengthen, whatever you wanna call it. The rear one is way too long because it's for extended cab. So um, we're gonna get that one shortened um, and this one remade. Um, yeah, we're gonna go from there. Hope you guys enjoying the short bed uh, SS clone, uh, the turbo build. We are getting close to uh, wrapping some stuff up and getting a cab here shortly. So stick around, it's gonna keep going. Here we go, I can't believe I got such a good deal on this red cab, it's really what I've been looking for. Big shout out to Bobby, he uh, found it for me. And the dogs were being super good this day, in and out of the truck, just hanging out. Super excited. All right, we got the truck cleaned out, uh, all the old seats out so we can put the SS seats in. The dash is already pretty much empty. I do gotta take out that stupid little thing right there. Uh, a couple of things, then we'll have to start cleaning, um, but I got the door panels off because we're gonna put the bow uh, door panels on. Um, and then uh, I haven't been recording the front end just because tear apart a truck is tearing apart a truck. You guys already seen me do this once, so the front end's all gone on this one, and then we're gonna start lifting the cab up soon. But We're gonna do it just like the Egyptians did it, one block at a time.
Hard. That's right. Uh huh. All right, here we go. We're jumping right into the interior because I didn't record a lot of it. But just so you know, if you are doing the power windows and heated seats and all that stuff, you do got to swap out the whole dash, climate control, everything. It's just a lot easier so everything matches up. Yeah, you got to swap it out. Doesn't take that much time. All right, let's convert this to electric. We're also going to have uh, electric locks. Um, we're changing the handle to a painted handle. We're putting in the mirror from the SS. It has a blinker on the mirror, and I believe they might be uh, defrost as well. Putting in all of our heated seat controls, um, <clears throat> electric everything, so let's get to it. They're looking pretty good, right? All right, it's moving along. Uh, I'm gonna try to get the other side done here either tonight or tomorrow morning. So uh, let's get on it. I'm not gonna show everything but I'm gonna keep moving forward. Got a little ahead of myself. Forgot to put the wiring harness in. So, uh, time to do that. All right, as you can see, we're really wrapping up the interior. The both door panels are on, both, uh, the dash is on, so it's, it's looking pretty good. There's not many uh, single cabs that have heated seats. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. That's all that we have time for this week. Um, I hope you guys like this video. It's a long one, but uh, I hope you guys are really enjoying it. And uh, I'm really starting to like this truck and I can't wait to hear this thing. Until next time, get out in those garages.